shot this video a bunch of different times for one reason or another it never worked out so today we're gonna do a reshoot on the uh, oh what was it called the soldier gear survival kit the soldier something or other you know what I can't honestly remember but I did a video like way back last spring and if I remember I will put a link to that video in the uh, description which to be honest I'll probably forget but I, I will try to remember um, I have made improvements on this thing and I want to show you guys what the improvements are and why. So, you'll have to excuse the helmet head too. I've been riding my snow machine all week long. I've, I've had the helmet on more than I've had it off. So, my, uh, my hair's all messed up. And uh, I, uh, I look like crap. But I've been having so much fun. So much fun. So, it's a little bit rainy. Let's go inside the ice cave and do the video in there. Up until this weekend, I still had the sleeve that went on here with all of the advertising and the name and kind of whatever. But I stuck it in the little glove compartment in my snow machine with like a bunch of other junk. And it got all wet. And I just figured, ah, I'm going to throw it out. Totally forgot the actual name of it. <clears throat> but, uh, isn't it nice in here? Some years ago, in this spot, my dad proposed to my mother right in here with wine and a professional... Um, entertainer, singing, and the whole kit and caboodle. It was something else. So, it's not the best subject material, but I'm going to dedicate this video to mom and dad. All right. Now, as I mentioned before, every kit should have at least the first five C's of survival. At least. After that, you get as many of the secondary five C's as you can cover to try to get all the ten C's possible. So, this will fall short of the ten, but it fell short of the five before. So... We have, for cutting, we have wire saw. Now, I don't imagine it's stainless steel. So, I keep it in a Ziploc bag to stay as dry as possible. Because the last thing I want is for this thing to rust out and be no good to me when I need it. There's no point in preparing if the things that you have uh, are no good. So, wire saw with swivels so that it doesn't bind up and get like a kink in it because as soon as you start to use that with a kink, it's going to break. You don't want the ones that don't have the swivels. Also, this is, how many is that? It's probably like five, but one, two, three, four, four, five. It's a bunch of different ones braided together. You don't want one of those single wire saws with just the notches in it because they're garbage and they don't work very well and they break. So this is a bunch of wires that are braided together for a better cutting surface. And you can definitely feel the difference when when you uh, when you have it in your hand, 
Now, I have some video somewhere a while back that shows you how to properly use one of these things. I was thinking about it last night and I totally forgot to look, but I wanted to put a couple of small nails or drywall screws or something into this kit so that I can make a, a bow saw easier than, uh, you know, looking for just the right stick. So a couple of screws will be going into this kit. And the purpose of that is to hold on to the, uh, the little circular keychain things. Uh, because if you've seen that video, you know, you don't use it in your hand and, and go, you actually turn it into like a bow saw and use it like a proper saw. It's more effective, you use up less energy and you're less likely to break it. Also with cutting, I have put in my old neck knife. The new neck knife that I have is just infinitely better. But there's nothing wrong with this, and it fits just perfectly in the kit. So, just a, a cheap little Wartec. There's really nothing wrong with it. It is a pretty good knife. But it's not my primary neck knife anymore because I have that Condor Bushlore Mini, which is so much better. So this got put into there. So that is cutting, mostly in a nutshell. I also have a very, very small multi-tool. And it has some cutting capability. It's got a file and a, a couple of little knives, but it's also got screwdrivers and, you know, kind of whatever, and you never know. But most importantly, the, um, the needle nose pliers, they're nice and small, they're fairly thin. I can get a ticket with these extremely easily. Really, really handy to have something like this. Ticks are serious. You don't want them on you. You want to get them off as soon as possible. So you got to have something or other to get the ticks off. And if you're going to have something, then you might as well have a, a multi-tool of some sort for backup cutting, backup tools, and whatever. Okay. Also, I've got one of those little, like, wallet survival cards, a little, I guess they were called ninja cards or something like that. Um, now, this is stainless steel. It is pretty good. Um, it's got, you know, like a, some wrench kind of pieces and a bottle opener and a, a scraper and a screwdriver and a little cutting saw and a can opener. Now... I don't really know that much about all of the tools on here. I know the scraper's all right. Um, I know that the, the little saw thing is kind of garbage. Um, but if you're making trap triggers, it's probably helped get the job done. But the can opener. Holy man, you should check out the can opener. on It just glides right through. You open a can in no time flat. And if you're in a survival situation, you come across an old campsite and there's some cans... And the, maybe the food in it is still good or whatever. You can get into a can with us so easily. I was very impressed. We had a power outage uh, where I live for uh, most most of... Actually, it was about a day and a half, I think. And uh, I don't have like a, a regular can opener uh, that you just turn. I have an electric can opener because my turn one just dulled out. And it was kind of useless. So I threw it out and I didn't buy a new one at this point. And then I remembered, I've got like that little ninja thing, and holy jumpins, man. It was just so easy to get those cans open. I don't even have one of those turn things anymore because they do wear out in their garbage. I just keep one of those around. So that helps. That is, it's so awesome. Very impressed. Oh. Okay, so that's basically cutting. Um, my light source, or candling. Uh, I have just a the little flashlight that, that came with the kit. Um, the batteries have been in it for like about a year, almost a year now. And, you know, they, they still work. It's It'll get the job done, okay? My regular flashlight is, uh, it's 
rechargeable 1000 lumen tactical flashlight with the crenellations for self-defense and the whole kit and caboodle. It's awesome flashlight, but this is a really, really good backup. And for a little kit like this, it does get the job done. A headlamp would be kind of nice, but it would be really hard to get a headlamp in here. So all in all, combine those together with a little bit of forethought and you could, you know, you tie it to your head and you can make it. So it gets the job done, right? So that's my candle. Cordage. I have, I believe that's 15 feet of uh, 550 paracord. I would like to have more paracord in there, but this kit is actually packed pretty tight. So I don't think I could get more than 15 feet. 20 or 25 would be ideal, but what are you going to do? I, I, I'm trying to work with just this box. This is, I would not want to rely on this, but I'll keep this more or less in the back of my skidoo. Um, because, you know, just in case. Just in case. So, 15 feet of 550 paracord is a bare minimum. Bare minimum. 10's just not enough. Combustion. I have a tiny little ferro rod in here. As soon as I can replace this with something better, I probably will. On my... Buck Selkirk is a ferro rod that's a little bit bigger than this. The handle's a slightly smaller profile and it's a whistle. If I can get a replacement one, I'll put it in here. I don't know if you can order them or not. I haven't actually looked into it. I've been thinking about it. I never really, I don't like these, the strikers that they come with. But, I know the card will strike it. Yeah. So will the knife. So, for the most part, I was actually going to throw the striker away, but I kind of figured, ah, you know what, maybe it, it's got like some little teeth on it, and you never know. You never, it might be useful for so. So I left it in there. It didn't really take up any space, so why not? But, I have a small ferro rod that will be replaced when I can get a better one. Hopefully, hopefully order the uh, Selkirk one. Cover. <clears throat> There's very, very few options for cover that will fit in a small kit like this. It's just very, very few. And for the most part, you can't beat a Mylar blanket. You just, you can't beat a Mylar blanket. It, it more or less gets the job done, and it is pretty versatile, and it doesn't take up that much space in your kit. Anything else is going to take up pretty much that whole box. It, it's just, you're, you're kind of stuck with that when you're working with something like that. It's just the way it is. Um, but it, it's waterproof, it's windproof. It, it gets the job done, it's, it's not that bad. So, um, now I actually took the Mylar blanket out of here because it was fairly small and I replaced it with one that's twice the size as the one that was in here. And I can't remember the measurements because the, uh, little cardboard thing that sits up top. Um, I just tore it off to save space. So, but I do remember it, it's it's a fair size. And for a big guy like me, you know, I'm six feet tall, that does a lot better than what I had in there before. <clears throat> so that's my cover. Container. That's a little bit trickier because this thing is plastic. A metal one would have been a lot better, but for the most part, when you get the metal ones in these cheaper things, they're made out of aluminum or really, really crappy metal that you don't want to boil water with at all anyway. You really don't. 
So what I did is I took close to like half a roll of aluminum foil and just folded it up in such a way that it fits in the kit. There's a lot of foil here. I can make a cup and a pot very easily with what I have here and still have enough left over for some small cooking of some kind so that I could say use the pot to boil water, the cup to boil water and drink out of, and then the remaining foil to cook like a small animal or fish in. Now, there's no actual fishing kit or means to catch fish in here, which actually would be a good idea now that I think of it. I'm sure I could fit some line and hooks in there as well, but uh, right now it's kind of set up for the snow machine, and if you don't have a way to punch a hole through the ice, you're not fishing. So, aluminum foil is the way to go for your container in a small thing like this. So, and like I said, you could fit a lot of aluminum foil in a small, small amount of space. Doesn't take up much at all. Button compasses are... They're iffy. They're very, very touch and go. Most small button compasses are garbage. You got to pay a little bit extra, not a lot, but a little bit extra to try to get one that actually works. And I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of you have probably seen the odd um, YouTube channel or whatever talking about compasses and how if you're just one or two degrees off from your azimuth over a amount of space you're going to drift a long long way and you're going to be lost so your 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 compass has to be able to do the job and you got to know what you're doing to even use a compass as well it's a good idea to more or less Keep an eye on your, your distance of travel and your direction of travel and, and kind of try to keep a mental note. So this button compass has sort of a clip on it so that I could very, very easily. Okay, maybe not very, very easily. <laughs> Fairly. Oh, yeah, that's because I'm. You generally do this before you put your snowsuit on, but, wow, I've done this like six times, didn't have a problem, now all of a sudden because the camera's rolling, okay, I'm not going to, it's got a clip, it'll fit on here, if I take my jacket off and put it on, it'll fit on here, so every once in a while I can just pull my glove down a bit and check my direction of travel and more or less keep track of where I am and this button compass cost me a couple of extra bucks but it works that's important and I check it I, I check it regularly because on the snow machine it does bounce around a fair bit and it's not good for a compass so I'll have to replace it here and there but I paid a couple of extra bucks to make sure that I have one that works so there that is My, uh, my whistle, my um, communication. You're, I would prefer a howler whistle over this, but this does a pretty good job and there's a little space in here with a cotton ball with Vaseline tucked in there. So, that helps me to get a fire going and the because it's sort of small and round it doesn't take up as much of a footprint as the uh, howler would and it still does a pretty good job plus 
I'm out on a frozen lake, I'm, you know, kind of wherever, that'll travel a pretty good distance. I don't necessarily need a great big honk and scream and howl or whistle because I'm not in the bush uh, where there's lots of leaves and kind of whatever to dampen the sound. I'm out in the middle of winter. That's going to travel a long, long way. And like I say, it's got some fire lighting in there. It's also got a key ring on there so I can take some of my paracord or whatever and put it on a necklace and just have it so that it's it's on me so if I'm stranded if there's something wrong and I see somebody way you know off in the distance I can just pull it out and start blowing on it and I'm not yelling and screaming so that when somebody finally does find me I don't have a voice to tell them what's going on or what's wrong so Always, 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 always have a whistle for um, calling for help. Because you can only yell so loud for so long. Other than that, there's just the plain plastic box, which it, it, it locks up pretty tight. It's probably water resistant to a certain degree, but it's definitely not waterproof. I could possibly use that to, uh, I don't know, collect maybe, you know, some fire tinder or maybe some food if I'm picking blueberries or, you know, whatever in the springtime or, um, it's, It's not nearly as useful as a good metal container with the, 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 the rubber ring uh, to waterproof it, but use your imagination. You know, if, if you think outside the box, you can do a lot with a little. And that's what these kits basically are all about. I would not want to rely on this for long, but with enough imagination, I can do a lot with a little and I can get by. So, okay, let me see now. What changes have I made? Let me jump this. There we are. So first of all, no, first of all, it didn't have anything for container. Nothing. You can't even use the box didn't have anything for a container. So the aluminum foil was a must. For cover, the cover that it had in it was way too small. My, half my head and, and most part of my legs would have been hanging out from the, from the blanket that they had in there, the Mylar blanket that they had in there. So I upgraded that. The button compass that they had in didn't work worth crap. It was total garbage. So I upgraded the button compass. It now, I know it works. It's now fine. The Ninja wallet card was in there. The whistle. I'm putting everything down on the ice that I'm sitting on and it's actually freezing into the ice. The whistle was in there. Didn't have the cotton ball with Vaseline tucked inside. It did have the space. So, all right. The ferro rod was in there. Striker's kind of garbage, but eh, what are you gonna do? That will be upgraded, probably. It, but I mean, you know, it, it will get the job done. All right, cordage. Didn't have any cordage in there. I put the paracord in there. A survival kit with no cordage. How ridiculous is that? Hmm. The flashlight was in there, didn't have batteries, but of course it's not going to have batteries. It'll sit in there with the batteries in it, the batteries will die out and then they'll leak acid and it'll ruin the flashlight. So don't just buy a kit, throw it wherever. And expect that you know everything's going to be in there because the flashlights will not come with batteries or at least they shouldn't if the people who put it together had a brain in their head uh, the saw 
came with the kit. If it didn't have the, the one with the, the swivels, I would have replaced it, but it had the swivels. So I didn't have to. The knife I put in, the only thing that it had for cutting before I put that knife in was a very, very, very crummy mini multi-tool. And the minute, the minute that I used that multi-tool for anything, which I was actually testing it, it bent and came apart. So I spent a little extra money and I got one that isn't total garbage. When you buy the cheaper kits, you're going to get the, the cheaper versions of everything. Which, I mean, this kit cost me, I think, like 20 bucks. So, I, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks for a decent little multi-tool. Whatever. Not a big deal, no problem. And... There we go. It's... Nope. That thing. It all fits in here, I swear. There we go. It's a very base, bare minimum that you can keep in the back of your ATV, snow machine, in your canoe or boat or kayak or whatever, or just slip it into a pocket and it gives you a little bit of capability to keep yourself going good until help can arrive. And maybe it was less than 50 bucks. I'm pretty sure I'm well, it was probably less than 40 bucks. And it's everything I need right there to sort of get a little campsite and a fire and just sort of keep myself comfortable, even marginally comfortable in really, really horrid conditions, increases my comfort level until help can arrive. To me, that's worth it. That is completely, totally worth it. And if you've ever gotten lost and spent a night in the harsh wilderness, in the bad weather, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, <laughs> I envy you because I have. So I'll, I'll keep that on me wherever I go in situations like this. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you have a good one. And uh, let me see, when I'm recording this, is right in the end of Family Day weekend up here in Canada. So I hope you had a great family day. I know I sure did. And you guys have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.